Hey guys, welcome back. This time I'm using the Geranium XL um, tray mold from Mold and Shapes. I will um, link their website um, into my description box so you can check out. They have wonderful molds and this mold is really fantastic. And I want to use it for wall art, this design. And yeah, just check check them out. And please consider my promo code PT5 so you get 5% discount on every order you do with them. So I think this is a good thing. There you see me dividing my clear resin so I can mix my colors. I'm using um, the Forever Cups from Colorberry and I think this is a great idea. Um, I really use a lot less of the paper cups and this is good. So there you see me giving two pumps of the crystal white pigment paste. My colors today will be anyway um, white, mainly white, except from my glitter mix. And I'm using, um, except from the pigment paste, everything from the Aura box, except from also the crackles I, I mix. So there's my next um, cup and I'm doing my glitter mix. So this is the a little bit more chunky um, champagne glitter mix from the Aura box from Colorberry. There I'm putting some of the golden metal flakes into my cup. Yeah, you always need to be careful because these flakes are so light and they are just flying around. Now they are stuck on my hands, so yeah, I need to see that I clean my gloves a little bit, but getting all flakes also into my cup. And yeah, these are the rose crackles. And I like this color a lot because it stands a little bit out and I think it gives the whole design a little bit a pop up to use another color than a golden color with the crackles. So I'm stirring my mix well up. And now I'm starting with my colors. My first um, white is number four and it's a sort of sparkle white but um, for me it has a little hint of silver in there and I like it a lot it's very very sparkly don't know if you can see it from the video but fantastic color I like the idea a lot about having so many different shades of white you normally would think white is white, but no, <laughs> no, no, no. So my next white is the number 20 from the box. And it's a sort of, yeah, purplish, bluish, rose, um, opal look. I'm not quite sure if it's a sort of color shift as well. Um, I think it would have been a good idea if there would have been descriptions to every um, bag and not just the numbers but on the other hand you just grab some um, colors you you look and yeah you see what 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 you can achieve but I really really like this you can see it, it's really a little bit purplish, pinkish, bluish. And my 
last white is a sort of um, yeah they are fine flakes and it gives a little bit of a druzy effect can I say a druzy effect it's also very shimmery so very beautiful Yeah, I'm giving it a quick stir. And there you go. Um, the resin I'm using actually is CB20 resin from Depot. And it's a low viscosity resin. And I'm very happy with this. Yeah, and by the way, this is the Aura box. And you see the different shades of whites. And for instance, there is a golden holographic um, glitter. It's awesome. So I'm now starting to pour. And um, the first color is the number four, which is more the silvery um, glittery color. But before, let me just get some dust out of my mold and there you go I'm just pouring randomly I, I'm not pouring with any special pattern because I want the colors to to blend nicely and to see what effects I can get with the white and if there are some reactions and yeah <laughs> So this is the more opal look, which I call a little bit a color shift. And I go where the gaps are. Taking my time. Not to be in a hurry. Yeah, filling some gaps. So this was now the number 20 I used from this box. Yeah, there fell something into my resin, so just taking it out. And my next shade of white is this sort of druzy effect. And I also randomly pour this also a little bit in those gaps which I have. But I'm not really thinking a lot um, what I'm doing, how I'm pouring. And I really like the shimmer. I think you can see it already. And now I'm going with the um, crystal white pigment paste. And this one will hopefully give me a very beautiful effect. Here I go first um, from the outside. Following the pattern of um, the mold. And I'm not pouring too, too thin. And then I'm also pouring a little bit more in the center. Just how I feel like. And now I'm taking my clear. And I put this first where um, the petal, petals of um, the tray are, uh, yeah, of the tray are just to push the white out and now more in the center.
and I'm hoping for a lot of movement and nice blendings and pattings, uh, patterns, um, triations. Yeah, giving it a quick torch again. And I'm randomly using my white pigment paste again, just on top. And I'm hoping for no blobs, <laughs> but we will see. Yeah, I'm checking and I'm also checking how far my mold is filled because I want to rather fill it to the top. Now I'm going again with the number four, which is more the sparkle, the silver sparkle. And you see, I'm, I'm just going with the flow. Just taking my colors, my white colors, and I'm just pouring. This is now the sort of druzy effect. And the opal effect, opal effect. And now my glitter mix. And I was not sure how to pour my glitter mix. So I thought go from one side and jump over another side. <laughs> so doing the same now on that other side. But if you're really carefully watching, um, you can already see what the white pigment paste is doing. It's already pulling to the center and it's starting to make nice patterns. So I'm very confident that there won't be any big blobs. And yeah, I'm just pouring my glitter. So I'm pouring it a little bit like a star. <laughs> yeah, and I need to see how it is. Also put in the center because I wanted some gold in the center and I'm using a little bit more clear because it's still not um, filled up to the top Yeah, and I was doubting, should I put another white in there? But now I'm torching it. Yeah, this resin hardly has any bubbles, but of course, because you are fiddling around, there are coming some bubbles up. But normally it's a very clear and crystal resin. Also it's really, really brilliant. And there I saw something sticking up. So I'm putting this a little bit down.
and I'm giving it a quick torch. And now I'm gonna take you down for close up. Yeah, cleaning my hands. <laughs> but there you go. So this is how it looks straight after the pour. And you can really see what the white is doing. It's making its patterns. And you have the sparkle in there. A little bit of this opal effect. And yeah, this is round about half an hour later and you can already see how it's blending. I really like it. So next day, unmolding time. And I'm really, really curious. And yeah, I'm sorry, I need to make a little bit more space. And... I'm taking it out of the mold and it's popping out very, very easily. I'm always nervous when I do such a big piece, how it works out and because it's a lot of resin that's in there, a lot of pigments and yeah, I already in love with this side. Uh, I'm sorry, this is our Brilli. <laughs> Yeah, he's always moaning after a while. And yeah, let's turn the baby over. So I thought here is the glitter a little bit too much. But I like how the white reacted. But looking back at um, the pouring side, I actually like the pouring side a lot more. Because you can see what the white has done. It has done so beautiful patterns. And you know guys. You don't always need to use the back side. Because a lot of the times the front sides. Yeah. It's even better. And yeah I got reminded by one comment. Of one of my last videos. And look at this. Really like this. Yeah, Brilli. And this is the other side. He's out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, and this is the other side. And yeah, the whites have really done nice things. So. I hope you liked this video. And I see you for my next video. Thanks for watching and yeah, take care guys. Bye bye.